Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 45. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you are doing well in whatever stage of lockdown or isolation that you are in. I hope that these videos are helping you to feel a little bit less alone, helping you to just have something to look forward to. I'm sorry they're not very often anymore because I'm madly trying to get my book finished. At the moment I've been plodding through stitch diagrams and stitch instructions and I have to keep reminding myself that there will be a book at the end of this. It is getting there, it's just, or it always takes longer than I wish it did. So today I wanted to talk to you about PDF patterns and I also wanted to show you how to use a plastic hoop correctly. Um, after my video last week where I showed you my Christmas decorations and said that the patterns were available, um, I had quite a lot, or I had a number, but it usually adds up to quite a lot over a period of time, of people say to me, have you considered selling your patents as PDFs? My answer to that is always yes, I have considered selling my patents as PDFs and I'm not going to do it. You, I'm sure, know that stealing from designers in this industry is absolutely rife. People feel, for some reason, that it's absolutely okay to share uh, patterns with their friends. I know many embroidery groups get together and they purchase one pattern and then they share it between all of them. That's actually stealing. It's stealing from designers and then they wonder why there are not many uh, Hardanger designers or whatever around these days. Well, there's a very good reason for that. It's because people steal from us and they put people out of business. I wasn't going to have a rant on that, but I just ended up doing that. I'm sorry. Um, but it is something that affects this industry. It affects me. I have friends whose businesses have failed because people have stolen from them and continually done it. So I'm not going to sell my, my patents as PDFs because they are way too easy for anyone to, send, uh, to share with their 1,000 nearest and dearest friends. Now, I know that most of the people watching this would never, ever consider doing that, and I thank you. But there are some who do, and they wreck it for all of us. And as of yet, I have not found a safe way to be able to send PDF patterns to people in a way that I can be sure that they won't be sent on to someone else after that. And so that's why I won't be selling my patterns as PDFs. I know that I probably lose some sales from that but I'd rather lose sales than lose my business. I hope you can understand that. So today I'm gonna to show you how to use these plastic hoops. Now these are not my favorite product in any shape or form. I actually loathe them and you couldn't pay me enough to use one of them. Um, and I'll talk about why uh, later. Um, but I know that some people do have these and this fits your budget and I want you to be able to use it properly. Um, so, these hoops generally have a lip on the inner ring and the outer ring doesn't have a lip at all. Now on this one, but not on all of them, on the side that's got the lip, it says top. Now I can't, I don't know if you can see that properly. No, you can't. Let me try. So it says top on it and there's a reason for why that is. Now often when people use these hoops, I'm just going to fumble around down here for a minute and put this together. Now I've got a piece of a small piece of embroidery here and I'm going to put it into the hoop the way most people put it into the hoop. So that is, I'm just going to slide it in like that and like that. Now you can see that the lip is on the back there. When I tighten that and then try to tighten these, every time I pull that down, it's actually pulling the inside hoop down and therefore away from the outer hoop. It's going to keep loosening every single time. So that lip isn't supposed to be at the bottom. As it said on it, it's supposed to be at the top. Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. And when you do it properly, you have to undo this screw pretty much all the way. I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna turn it around so it will be at the top this time. I'll put my embroidery over it. And then, no, it still needs to go further. It really needs to go as far as you can out to the end. Or rather, that needs to. That's better. See, I don't use these very often. Okay, so now I've got that over it. And the lip has come out above the surface of the outer hoop. Now I can tighten that up. 
tighten, 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 tighten. And it will take forever because I had to undo it so far. So just chat amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. Okay, and it's starting to get a bit tighter now. And I just keep tightening and tightening and tightening and tightening and tightening and tightening. Sorry, this is a bit dull, isn't it? And now what I'm doing is I'm also trying to tighten the fabric in the hoop. This is probably not quite a large enough piece of fabric. It's just one that I found sitting on my desk. So I thought that I'd just grab it rather than cutting a new piece. And it's got an embroidery on it, so it gives you the idea. Okay, so I've got that quite tight now. And what you can see is that that, I'll bring it further away, hopefully you can see that well. Um, you can see that that loop, sorry, loop, lip sits out over the, the outer ring. And what it means is that the fabric has to do that, that sort of shape. It goes around the lip. And it means that when you tighten that, it's pulling the inner hoop down into the outer hoop and therefore it's actually making the whole thing tighter. Now the reason, so that's how it's meant to be. The lip is at the top, it takes longer to set it up, but it will actually stay tighter for you and will give you a better result as you're stitching with it. I still wouldn't use them myself, but if that's what you have to use, that is the right way to use it. I hope that helps. Um, and to remind you, if your hoop has top written on it, that's why it has top written on it. It's supposed to be at the top and it's supposed to be the lip goes at the top edge. Right, so I'm going to take that out now. No, I don't need to take it out. I'm going to show you what I would prefer to use. I would much prefer to use one of these hoops. It's a wooden hoop. It's a good quality one. This is called Mine Hobby. I think it's a Klass and Gessman brand. Um, and it's a good German um, hoop. It's made of beech wood. It's strong and it's sturdy. This is a, a deepish one. It's not as deep as some, but it's deepish and you can't bend it. It's really solid and strong. Um, in the end of the screw there, there is a slot to put your screwdriver in and tighten it. So it means you can get it really tight. And if I was using one of these, I would bind at least the inner ring with fabric to make it grip better. It would grip better on the fabric. Um, now, when you use these, sometimes they are not exactly round and you'll need to turn that inner ring as much as you can so that it fits nicely with the outer ring. I'm just going to turn it so you can see what I mean. If I do it like that, you can see there's a big gap over this side here. So that's not sitting correctly in the ring. It's a bit tight. Come on. And if I turn it back like that, you can see that the, um, the shapes of the two rings match up much better like that. These hoops are just much stronger. They are not going to flex while you're using them. Once you've wrapped your inner ring, it will grip really nicely. And because you have this here, you can tighten it really well. The better quality hoop that you can use, the better the result you will get. When you're using your hoop, it should be drum tight so that when you bang on it, you get a, a drum sound. But keep in mind that every time you do press on it, you are actually loosening it. So try not to press on it as much as possible. Um, the other reason why I like to use a hoop that's about this size is because if, it's, if I'm holding it in my hand, which I am for this because it doesn't have a slot to go into my um, embroidery stand, um, I want to be able to reach around to the middle. I don't want a hoop that's this big because then I can't get my hands around the side to the inner part. And so that's why I use, like to use small hoops where I can. If it's a bigger one and it's on a stand, then I don't mind so much because I've got both hands to access with because I'm not holding one of them with my hand. Sorry, I'm not holding my hand. Sorry, I'm not holding the hoop with one hand so therefore I've only got one to use for the embroidery. Makes sense, I hope. What a mess. Um, yes, so when you're using one of these, the lip should be at the top. Uh, you can also see that there's no screw thread or anything with one of these to tighten it with. You just have to keep turning and turning and turning. This one's got the screw thread. There's one of the screw thread. The, the screw slot. The screwdriver slot. Um, this one's sturdier. This one's wobblier. It, it just doesn't have the same grip that this one does. The lip's going to help but it's not going to be the same. 
I would prefer these. These are available on my, on my website. Um, so if you've got a, a plastic hoop, that's how you use it. Oh, dear me, what a mess of my words today. I hope you've managed to fumble your way through that with me. Um, thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. <laughs>